Hello, welcome back to the second part of the video. In this video, we are going to create curbs with an angle, road markings, and road camber. So let's get started. Now back to the road and path without curbs. We will create the second type of curb with an angle. First, I'll create the profile for the curb. I'll go to the File menu, select New, and then choose Family. In the Family menu, I'll go to Railing, find Profile Rail, and open it. Once opened, I'll create the curb profile. I'll select the Line tool to draw the profile. Since the units are currently in inches and feet, I'll change to millimeters by typing UN on the keyboard, selecting millimeters in the menu, and clicking OK. Now from the Create menu, I'll select the Pick Line tool. The intersection of the center lines represents the point where the curb will meet the asphalt of the road. I'll draw the profile by going down 150 millimeters, 15 centimeters, then right 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters, up 300 millimeters, 30 centimeters, and left 70 millimeters, 7 centimeters. Finally, I'll close the profile to form an angled curb. Once I create the profile, I save it in a specific location and then load it into the project. I go to the File menu, save the file, name it Curb, and then load this profile into the project. After saving the family, I go to the Architecture tab and select Railing. From the Railing options, I click on Edit Type and duplicate the existing type, naming the new one Curb then click OK. In the Rail Structure section, I insert the profile I previously created, named Curb. After that, I assign a material to the profile, choosing Concrete for the Curb, and click OK. Now you can see the 3D view of the Curb, but I need to remove the balusters. All balusters should be set to none because I don't need them. Make sure to set this for both the upper and lower sections. Click Apply and then OK. In the Use Top Rail section, I untick the option. After that, I would like to view the curb in 3D. Once the 3D model of the profile is created and everything is set, I go to place the curb on the topo solid or along the roadside. Then click OK. After clicking OK, I return to the main window where I use the Pick Lines option to select the boundary lines of the road where I want to create the curb. Once the selection of the boundary lines is complete, I click on Finish Edit Mode to create the curb. Now let's go back to the 3D model. As you can see, the curb has been created with an angle, similar to actual curbs on roads. The earth is currently visible below the curb, so I want to raise the asphalt slightly. I set the subdivision heights value to zero. For the ground under the asphalt bitumen, I enter a value of mang in a 50 in the height offset section. This raises the ground, making it look better compared to the previous version. Now, we can see the angled curb without the earth showing underneath, as you can see here. Sometimes when you create the curb, the angled face may be outward. For example, first, I go back to level 1. If you select the curb and change the direction by clicking on the arrows, as you see, the angle can be adjusted. If the angle is outward, simply go to level 1, select the curb, and change the direction by clicking the arrows. This will make the angled face point inward. Now you can see that the curb's angle is facing toward the road as intended. Similarly, just like creating a curb for the road, I would like to create a curb for the path. 
First, I go to level 1, select the railing tool, and then choose the pick lines option. I select the path boundaries and click OK. However, a pop-up message appears saying, the railing must be a single connected sketch. To resolve this, I click continue, discard the current selection, and then go back to the railing tool to select the path boundaries one by one. As you can see now, a curb has been created on both sides of the path as well. The next task I'm going to do is road marking. For this, I will use subdivision and select the topo solid. Remember, it is important to select the topo solid under the road section, not any other one. If you select the topo solid outside the road and create the road marking, it will cause an error. However, selecting the topo solid under the road ensures that the road marking is created without any issues. I select the topo solid under the road, go to subdivision, and then click on level 1 to start creating the road marking. First, I will draw the center line of the road, and on top of the center line, I will create the road marking. I set the road marking to have a width of 100 millimeters and a length of 1500 millimeters. Once created, I move it to the center of the road. After centering it, I copy the marking along the rest of the road. I also copy it to the other side of the road and rotate it by 90 degrees. For the curved section, you can manually create rectangular markings or you can use the line tool along the curb and apply the array method to divide it into the desired segments. However, for the purpose of this video, I will simply use a curve. While it might not be perfectly accurate, it effectively demonstrates the road marking process. I use the curve, position it at the center of the road, offset it, and then create segments using the split and trim tools. Once the segments are identified, I split the empty areas from the marking areas and delete the empty sections. Next, I go to Subdivision Heights to adjust the thickness. I set the thickness to 52 so that the marking is visible on the surface. Then I click on Material to change the material. I choose Parking Graphic. You can use Parking Graphic, another material, or simply Paint. I select Parking Graphic, but you can choose any paint type available, and then I click Finish Edit Mode. If a pop-up message appears stating that the lines must form closed loops, it means some parts of the marking are not closed. I close those parts first and then click Continue. For example, this corner of the marking is not closed. I select the line, adjust it to join and close the loop, and then click Finish Edit Mode again. If a warning appears, we can safely ignore it. Back in the 3D model, you can see that the road markings have been created on the road. Similarly, you can create parking markings as well. I go to level 1, but before that, it is important to select the topo solid under the road and marking. If you select other parts of the topo solid, you will encounter an error. So, I select the topo solid under the parking area, then go to level 1 again to create the parking markings.
To avoid extending the length of the video, I stop the recording, draw the markings, and then resume after completing the drawing. Once all the markings are completed, I adjust the subdivision height to 52 because the thickness of the asphalt material is 50 millimeters, and I increase the marking thickness to 52 so that it is visible on the road surface. Finally, I click on material to change its color. You can select paint or any other material as you prefer. I use the parking graphic material that is already selected and click OK. Back in the 3D model, you can see that the parking bays have been marked. The final topic I would like to cover in this video is road camber, also known as crossfall. This is the slope provided on both sides of the road for water drainage, structural integrity, and driving safety. How do we achieve that? First, I select the topo solid under the road and then add points. Since the asphalt thickness is 5 cm or 50 mm, I apply a slope of 2.5 cm, 25 mm. After setting this value, I add points along the center line of the road. When points are added, the center line is slightly elevated compared to the two sides. Similarly, I add points in other sections of the road. If I switch to a section view, you can see that the middle of the road is slightly raised. I adjust the scale for better visibility of the lines and the slope. The broken lines indicate the slope directed toward both sides of the road, left and right. Back in the 3D model, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future content. Thank you.